everyone, and welcome to another edition of Tuesdays with Montague. I'm Bill Montague. We're going to kick things off on a bit of a sad note today. Let's get, get him up there, people. Let's have a look right now. There, there he is. Have a look at Ron Francis Sr. and what a tremendous man he was. You know, I really got to know him over the years of his son, Ronnie Jr., playing in the NHL. And Ron Sr. passed away, I think it was Saturday, just a, a courageous battle, I'm sure, with cancer. And he was one of those real humble, modest individuals who really led by example. He was kind of a quiet guy, but always had that pleasant smile. And you could tell just by talking to Ronnie Jr. and even Ricky, you could tell the way that Loretta... Ron Sr.'s wife, the way that they brought up their kids. I mean, they really instilled some character in them and some leadership and, you know, that thing called respect. And you know what? The Sioux, the Sioux, we lost one of our great hockey dads on Saturday. Ron Sr. will never be forgotten. Also involved in the, uh, in the Special Olympics, a tremendous man. And again, my deepest condolences to his family. I think they had a private funeral. So, you know what? A big loss for the Sioux. Now, Let's move on. How about Sheldon Keith, people? I know you people in the Keith fan club. Yeah, you don't like it when Billy maybe talks down about your boy, eh? Yeah, your boy, you know. Boy, I say anything at all negative about Sheldon. You get all the, the feedback going and people get pumped up, especially the Keith fan club. But one thing I noticed, OHL Coach of the Year. Three candidates from the West people, Mike Vellucci, Jacques Volio, and Greg Gilbert. I mean, no Sheldon Keefe. Astonishing. I'll say that much. I thought the job that Sheldon did this year, he deserved to be a top two candidate in the entire league as far as I'm concerned, or definitely a top three. You get three candidates from the Western Conference, three from the Eastern, and he doesn't even get a sniff, people. I think it's a travesty. I think he should have definitely been ahead of Bolio, and he probably should have even definitely been ahead of Greg Gilbert, who I endorsed a year ago, and who, like Sheldon Keefe, came, came in midway and guided Saginaw all you know you know on, on that great great run look Sheldon Keefe completely transformed the culture in the Sioux Greyhound dressing room he made those guys accountable there was really a, a a dramatic change in that team when he took over and I can't believe he's not a candidate but I'll tell you the reason why it's probably because he chirps a bit too much he talks to the opposing players talks to opposing coaches hey that's just because he's intense he's competitive okay but he he He's got to maybe learn to control that a little bit. And when it comes time for coaching people, guess who, who, guess who votes? Yeah, your peers, other coaches, other GMs. And when they don't like you, when they don't like you, they ain't going to vote for you. Teddy Nolan got a taste of that when he was here in the Sioux. Three straight trips to the Cup. He doesn't win Coach of the Year once, mainly because Teddy was more standoffish. He was very intense. And his peers just said, ah, you know what? Screw Teddy. We're not voting for him. And I can tell you that's what happened with this guy. Now, very quickly, tell us, Cup. Sioux St. Marie, thumbs up. You did a great job. 32,000 people. You broke the record for attendance. Unbelievable. George Parsons, Murphy, you guys did a phenomenal job as chairs. And I'll tell you what, the Sioux's got to be happy about that. Don Cherry, female. Yeah, caused a stink when he maybe talked that he thought it was inappropriate. It was uncomfortable for women to be in men's dressing rooms. I think only because it's Don Cherry, people make a big deal out of it. I think a lot of people feel the same way. However, in this business, sometimes women have to be in, in that room to have the same competitive edge as their peers. A lot of them are men who are working at their competitive newspapers. And when you're, when you're dealing with deadlines and that, that's why a lot of reporters, I think, are allowed in there. They get in there. They got to get their interviews right away for TV, for newspaper. I think that Don's getting a bad rap here. There's no question that there's got to be some players walking around naked who are not very comfortable when they see the women come in and I say to you people I always feel there's a double standard how come the men aren't allowed in the women's dressing room 31 years 
Tell you what, I've never been in, a, in, in the women's dressing room. And let's talk about pro sports. You want to keep it a pro, although I know females who have been in OHL dressing rooms before. How about the WNBA? I, I doubt whether male men are walking around there looking at naked women. And if they were, I can guarantee to you that some of these women who kind of stick up for female reporter in men's dressing room, oh, they would be saying, oh, how dare the men get to see naked women? That's not right. The women should be clothed all that stuff unfortunate don always gets it takes a bad rap but that's also because we in the media we pump it up and we make something out of nothing well listen that's it for this edition tuesdays with montague i'm bill montague i'll see you again next week